Tuesday, and it's time for NBA basketball. I'm Jalen Rose, your host for ESPN on EA Sports. The San Antonio Spurs are moments away from starting this matchup against the Miami Heat. Mike Breen and JBG have the call, and we send it to them now. Welcome to the American Airlines Arena in Miami, Florida. It's Tuesday Night NBA, presented by ESPN on EA Sports, as we get set for tonight's matchup between the Miami Heat and the San Antonio Spurs. And here are tonight's starting lineups. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Breen. Joining alongside me, as always, is Jeff Van Gundy. All right, as this game gets underway, Jeff, is there anybody that stands out in your mind that they need to focus on against the Spurs tonight? With all the older players in San Antonio getting so much of the deserved recognition that they get, Ginobili, Parker, Duncan, it's Kawhi Leonard who Greg Popovich has deemed who's going to be the face of the franchise going forward. Offensively, could he ever be the number one option on a really good team? Probably not. But since he's come into the NBA, he's really improved his three-point shooting. He goes off the bounce a little bit better with his pull-up. He's a great cutter and mover without the basketball. His post-up game is continuing to evolve. And defensively, he's outstanding. You can put this guy on the best of the best in the NBA at the wing position, and he could get stops. Long arms, big hands, great intensity and terrific anticipation. Kawhi Leonard is a very, very good NBA basketball player. For the layup, goes up and puts it in. Sometimes the simplest plays are the hardest ones to execute. Good layup. The perfect dish, James the jumper. And misses his first shot tonight. Kicks it back outside. That's good. Look at that form. That's a thing of beauty. Chalmers coming across. Wade's trying for low post position, and the layup is good. Uh, that's one of the things we learned early on in our basketball lives. Easy layup, put it in right off the backboard. Parker against Chalmers. To Wade. Layup off the fake. Parker. Oh, that pass nearly picked off. And Tony Parker with a nice look sinks it. So that'll end the first quarter. Miami down by five. We'll be right back with more NBA basketball here on ESPN after the break. Second quarter is set to begin. No one comes out strong here to begin the first. What do you expect now, Jeff? Well, both teams have to look for some sort of consistency. No consistency in their play. Up and down first quarter, both teams close, but not well played. To Bellinelli. Duncan for two with a force shot. Can't convert on his first shot of the night. That's what he does. He rebounds. Rebounding is very consistent. If you rebound, you rebound basically every night. Once again, leading them in rebounding because he has superior timing and sense of where the ball is going to come off.
Ginobili. Shot is blocked. Allen. Checks his feet and moves back. Allen with a touch, puts it in. Nothing prettier than the spot up three point shot. That one was dead center right from the start. Out of bounds. That coach is going to make some changes on the floor. James gets it down low. It's blocked. To Duncan. To the rim. And a foul called against the Heat. Their first team foul. And he'll head to the line with just seconds to go in the second. First free throw, good. And gets both points from the line. First half comes to an end. The score is tied. We'll have more Tuesday night NBA from ESPN and EA Sports after this halftime break. Hey everyone, it's Jalen Rose, and I've got your EA Sports Halftime Report. The Miami Heat. With this game tied at halftime, each of these teams gets a fresh start to the second half. And I'm interested to see more of the chess game between the coaches. Have a look at the leading scores for the Miami Heat. Eric Spolstra shared some advice with his team down in the first half. Here is ESPN Wire. We got to get to defending them, and we got to get attacks. Attacks in the paint without turning it over. Best way to do it is to trust each other right now. The San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs find themselves at halftime with a tie score. The way they scored officially bowls well for them as they prepare for the second half. They'll be looking to keep that up. Greg Popovich gave some guidance with his team up on the scoreboard. ESPN Wired. Great way to compete, look. great aggressiveness. Do your work early, get balanced, be ready to chase. First half stats. And here we have a look at the first half stats. Player of the half. Ray Allen has got the trifecta going, leading all players in points, Rebounds and assists. And something tells me that it's just one half of what's going to turn out to be an amazing game for this guy. He's been unstoppable. And here we have a look at his stat line. was cold. Chalmers suffered through a scoreless first half. It's very difficult to comprehend that a player that has taken so many three-point shot attempts was not able to get one field goal attempt to fall. Who 
we handpicked them for you. Here are the top plays. Number three. Number two. Number one. All right, back to the second half. I'll see you after the game. Welcome back to the American Airlines Arena for the second half. Jeff Van Gundy alongside me here tonight. Mike Breen on hand. Miami's in another nip and tuck game. Some good things in the first half. What do they have to do in the second half? Coming out of halftime, they've got to play with the same offensive energy as in the first half. Run it up, get into your stuff quickly, and then attack the basket. Blocked by Haslam. Passes it right back. Goes to the goal, puts it in, and draws the foul. And he'll get to shoot a free throw tonight for the first time in the game as he tries to complete the three-point play. Absorbs the contact, finishes the shot, and now works his way to the free throw line. Parker moves into the front court. There's a foul. It's called against the Heat. So that's the first foul in the last two minutes. Next one, they're in the penalty. One count late as the defender stepped over to take the hit and the possible charge. But I like the effort, the intensity, but the anticipation just has to be a little bit better. Bosch at the rim. Flips it in. Paint points. So very valuable to trying to win NBA game. You've got to have somebody, either on the dribble penetration or in the post-up game, that gives you consistency through shooting the ball well. You do that with the shots right around the basket area. Converts on the inside. Hey, kids at home, you need to study this man's body control and poise as he finished that shot in the paint. Inside, makes the adjustment and gets it to go. This is the difference between college and the NBA. The ability to take on the second defender, contort your body, and still finish. Parker for two. It's good. And one. Chris Bosch picks up his second. That's great body control right there. Finishes the shot and now goes to the free throw line. Able to hit the free throw and it's a three point play. It's a turnover off the deflected pass. He's broken away. He's fouled by Chalmers. First free throw, perfect. Free throw shooting, knocks down a pair. Wade. At the buzzer. And that'll do it. Three quarters complete. Miami up by two. We'll have more NBA action coming up for you right after this short break. This one has been close throughout. What are the keys now as we get set for the fourth, Jeff? They've got, both teams have got to get quality shots, 
rebound the ball, and most of all, Mike, what kills you down the stretch of game is turnovers. Take care of the basketball. No question. Yep, that's a foul called against the Heat. Their first team foul. Good offense is about getting your best players their best shots in their best spots. Here, an aggressive move. You're a great free throw shooter. Earn your way to the free throw line. Take the contact. Take the foul. Work your way there and knock them in. And Tony Parker with nine points. Final minutes, every possession crucial. In the paint, puts it up and in. What a play from Mario Chalmers. You're not winning late in a close game playing that type of defense, allowing the ball to go in a direct line drive right at the basket. To James. Puts it up. Two-pointer won't go. Parker. Nice little dump off. Puts it up for two. He sinks it. Nice entry pass there to set it up. When you play that good a defense and you contest the two-point J, you expect a good result there. The offense was just superior. The concentration and the follow-through. He stuck his shot. Let's it fly. It's good. Two-point game. Give me good offense over good defense any day of the week. Well defended possession, but better offense. Duncan attacks the basket and flips it home. To Wade, ref says his foot's on the line. Turnover. Manu Ginobili's come back off the bench here. Parker against Chalmers. To Bosch. Fires away for two. Knocks it down. It's a two-point game. As we wind down the fourth, there's a timeout. You're down late in the game. One possession game. What you need to do is not waste time. You've got to catch it and attack the basket. And then take the first quality shot you get. Job drawing the foul. It's called against Bosch. And he gets to go back to the free throw line. A couple of more free throws. Make no mistake, the pressure is on right now. Down two, you need both to give your defense a chance to get the critical stop of the game and force this game into overtime. Clutch free throw shooting, and the game is tied. And Eric Spolstra calls a time with very little time remaining in this one. We'll be right back with more basketball here on ESPN after this short break.
And the extra period begins to wait. Gets to the rim. Count it. Plus the foul. Good teams win for a reason. Bad teams lose for reasons. Fouling softly late in the game and allowing a guy to get a basket and a foul, inexcusable. Parker bringing it up. Pass deflected, but they hold on. Parker up and in. When you're playing with the lead late in a close game, defensively, you must shut down this painted area. If you don't, it could lead to a comeback. Haslam. A good look for two. Puts it in and draws the foul. That's an inexcusable play. You do not foul softly. You have to foul hard and prevent the basket. To give up a basket and a free throw, that's bad. Duncan. Wade against Ginobili. It's deflected, and they come up with it. Inside! Off the mark. Throws it down. What a play! The paint is not for the faint of heart. When that ball's in the air, you pursue it or you perish. Great offensive rebound, great finish. That's why they have a chance to win this basketball game. Wide open, that's a three. Chalmers' shot from behind the arc won't go. To Parker. And it's a turnover. Chalmers against Parker. Had to do it there. They stopped the clock with the foul. Up two with about a half a minute left in the game. It's absolutely critical you make both of these free throws and make it a two possession game. Two for two of the line, a little breathing room, now a four-point advantage. And San Antonio calls timeout and it just won a 20. You don't need a three right now. Attack the basket, get the quick two, or get to the free throw line, which allows you to set your defense and try to force a turnover. Parker. Gets inside. Hit him in the act and he'll head to the line. And he connects on the first free throw. He hits on both free throws. It's now a two-point game. Get him for the foul. They had to do it and stop the clock. Up two. You need to step up and make both to make it a two-possession game. Nope. First free throw won't go. On the mark with the second free throw, puts them up three. And Greg Popovich calling for a 20 here.
Ginobili. This could tie it. Ginobili with the three. And Miami calls timeout. They need to talk. Time, let's go to another OT. We've got overtime coming your way, but first, a short break. It's the NBA on ESPN. Time begins. Here we go. To Bosch. Chalmers against Parker. Shot no good. To Ginobili. Goes out of bounds, so it'll be heat ball. To Wade. To the basket. There's the whistle. Nice job drawing the foul. And he'll head to the line for the second time tonight. Hey, you don't see strength like that very often. The way he got fouled just to get the ball up into the rim was a great achievement. Good bounce back, hitting the second free throw. He's one for two. against Chalmers to Ginobili fires away knocks down the jumper and Tim Duncan with eight points Chalmers set to bring it up won't go for two count it plus the foul Udonis Haslam picks up his first personal of the night good teams win for a reason bad teams lose for reasons fouling softly late in the game and allowing a guy to get a basket and a foul inexcusable Chalmers into the front court Wade against Ginobili on the drive, Bosch with a finishing touch on a gorgeous pass. That's just a nice layup right there. Let's it go and gets it to go. Three-point game. You need guys who can make shots under duress and pressure. That was a well-defended possession, but that man stuck it even against the best defense. That shot won't go. Wow, he's wide open. He puts it in. Clutch shot. And they get the 20-second timeout. You don't need a three right now. Attack the basket, get the quick two, or get to the free throw line, which allows you to set your defense and try to force a turnover.
pass is deflected, and they get the turnover. There's the whistle. They had to stop the clock, so they get the foul. That's winning basketball. Get your best players to the free throw line to finish off close games down the stretch. That's good, solid winning basketball. He hits them both. This game perhaps getting out of reach. It's up to seven. And Eric Spolstra calls timeout here. The team needs to refocus. The coach has to do it at a timeout. He can't get it done on the fly on the floor. it in plus the foul that's an inexcusable play you do not foul softly you have to foul hard and prevent the basket to give up a basket and a free throw that's bad and the lead is cut to four and there's the foul they had to stop that clock with about a half a minute to go and you're up four if you make both of these free throws it totally alters your defensive strategy. You can just protect the three-point line because really, the two-point shot won't hurt you. Nice job at the line. They're now up six. And Miami calls a 20-second timeout here. The question here, when you have a two-possession deficit, is do you need a three? Well, what you need is either a quick two or get to the free-throw line and then if the three-point shot opens up, yes, you're ready to take it. Right back. Dumps it off beautifully. Gets a good look. Knocks it down. Four-point game. So they get the clock to stop with the foul. And he hits the first free throw. Nice job at the line. They're now up six. Timeout call. They need a 20. Defense picks off the pass. No choice there. They had to stop the clock and they give the foul. Knocks down the first one. He hits the pair of free throws. Their lead is now eight. Haslam gets it off. And this one is over. The difference tonight, turnovers, as they lose to the Spurs by a score of 49 to 41. This has been a presentation of ESPN on EA Sports. For Jeff Van Gundy and our entire EA Sports crew, this is Mike Breen saying join us next time and good night from the American Airlines Arena in Miami. Hello everyone, I'm Jalen Rose, and it's time for the EA Sports post-game wrap-up.
the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs scored enough points to guarantee a win in most any matchup. It's hard not to be impressed when a team is capable of working together to do something great. I don't think there was anything that could have been done to slow them down. What you see here is how the majority of the points were scored, both the San Antonio Spurs. Greg Popovich was critical of his team while trailing in the second half. He's mic'd up with the SPS. Had a lot of wide. great shots that haven't dropped. Keep moving the ball. It's the key. The ball's got to move. People got to move. Nobody holds the ball. The Miami Heat. The Heat provided the kind of offense that will win most games, but it wasn't enough for today's matchup. If there's a silver lining, however, it's exactly that. The fact they showed off some great scoring in this very memorable game. The Heat, look to these guys for their scoring here today. Eric Spolstra made the most of a timeout with his team up in the second half. Here's ESPN White. It's just multiple efforts, guys. It's your habits right now. Your habits, defensive habits. Get after it. Game stats. And here we've got the game stats for you. Player of the game. Tony Parker gets the award for the most obvious reason, and that's his scoring output. He couldn't be stopped, and it was incredible to watch. And now, of course, the shot chart. Cold. Chalmers wasn't much of an offensive threat in today's matchup. At least he didn't discriminate. He was horrible in the first half. He was terrible in the second half. We call that consistency. And for the stat geeks, here's a look at his numbers. Time now for the top plays of the game. Number three. Number two. Number one. That's it for our post-game wrap-up. On behalf of ESPN on EA Sports, I'm Jalen Rose. Thanks for joining us.